Well, now we're getting a lot of activity. We're getting a lot of scout activity. That is a really good sign. I saw four of them go in. And we're getting this much interest on here. That might mean we've got a swarm coming. We'll find out. Here comes another scout. All going in to measure. Coming back out. Love it. Another swarm trap. That's getting some attention. Scout there. Doesn't look like she took the bait. Maybe she'll be back. Another scout here by the Norse Hive. Oop, and there she goes, right inside. So we're redesigning this space. This is right off our kitchen. This is going to be a culinary herb area. Uh, we've got all kinds of different herbs that are planted in here. They're mostly perennial herbs for right now. We'll put in annuals later. We've got our different times. That's lemon time. This has already survived two years in this climate. Uh, here's a sage. And that has survived over winter. We've got parsleys. This is some winter savory. Some little lavenders. We'll see how those do. I think with the thermal banking of the house, we can keep those alive. And the reason I think about that is we had one lavender make it through the season already. We got some fever few here. Some alyssum. This is annual. Uh, might be perennial. We'll see. Not quite sure this variety in this climate. And we've got some oregano. And this here, this is sweet Sicily. This is one of the four fine herbs in French cuisine. It's got an amazing taste. Mmm. If you're not growing that, I highly recommend growing that. The seeds, they say, taste like uh, Mike and Ike's. I haven't tried the seeds yet, hoping to this year. And one of the, we always try to put in as many water features as we can. So we got a solar pump going here. This just helps with the birds. It gives them something to feed on. They can go and grasp onto this rim and the water attracts them. Um, one of the things that we put in, in the fall of last year, is this is the beginning of a little guild space. So we've got the rose here. This rose, this is going to be so it's like a tiny little guild. Rose will be our overstory. And then we've got currants around here. These are black, and I think there's one red currant. Uh, we've got here the lavender that survived from last season. We've got a comfrey, of course, which we will be using to feed the rose. I've been trying to integrate comfreys with all my roses so that we can just take the leaves from the comfrey as a dynamic nutrient accumulator and fertilize the roses without using any purchase fertilizer. Another thing that I like to do is we have like dandelions. Dandelions are also another wonderful nutrient accumulator. You just take those and feed them right back to the soil as they come up. No need to go and spray them or do anything evil to the land when you can actually be using them as their function should be. So yeah, this is a, our kitchen garden space. It's starting to develop and we're gonna have lots of great herbs coming out of here. We are in the, what we call the Valley Orchard space. It's a little micro um, food forest that we're going to put together. Uh, we've got our beds over here, lots of beautiful lettuce. Got to start harvesting this. Our arugula is going to flower, but that's fine. I, I want this to flower. 
and create seed. So, and it feeds the bees. They love these types of flowers. Um, we've got, this is this perpetual chard. We're gonna have a couple dishes of this this week and we've got to start using up our spinach. I see this is starting to go to bolt. So we're getting close to the end of our uh, cool weather crops. We gotta start sticking in a bunch of our warm weather crops. I got a bunch of starts to start plugging into places. And that's how the seasons go. I'm glad we were able to uh, harvest so much from these. One of the things that we're doing here is in our orchard spaces, we've got here, this is a Asian pear. Uh, we've, what I do is I'm staggering the trees. So we don't have a monoculture here. Uh, there is no tree next to each other in the row that is of the same species. So there's pears, there's cherries, there's Asian pears, there's plums, there's peaches, there's apples, uh, and we nectarines, and we stagger them out so that insects and pests are able to, um, are not able to find one tree and then move on to the next tree and move on to the next tree as you'd find in a standard orchard. Now, because we're building out a permaculture space, this is gonna be our overstory layer, are gonna be our fruit trees in this micro permaculture. Then we've got our bushy shrub layers. Here's a uh, black raspberry that's coming up, or blackberry actually. And uh, we'll have other shrubby layers like this. Here's our nitrogen fixer. All my nitrogen fixers, because I've got a limited amount of space here, are gonna be bushes and shrubs. So this nitrogen fixer here is a gumi, and we're gonna let that shrub out here next to the tree. This is a mulberry. Now this mulberry, this could get up to 30 feet tall. We're not gonna let it do that. We're gonna go every winter and we're gonna be coppicing this. So it'll develop into a bush. And this is a Pakistani mulberry. Uh, we'll see if we can keep it alive. It's supposed to be only hardy to zone seven, but I think with everything around here, maybe some winter protection, I might put down a, a sheet over it or something in some of our coldest days, uh, I think we can nurse this one through. I don't really want to nurse a lot of things through, but I hear that these mulberries are exceptionally tasty. So I'll do a little bit of work for that. And then our next layer is our herbaceous layer. So I've gone and I've started planting in herbs. Here's sweet Sicily again, that's perennial. Um, we've got over this way, this is a pineapple sage. Uh, this will not survive the winter, but that's okay. I, I love pineapple sage. I want to have at least one. And I don't mind regrowing it from seed every year. Uh, we've got some more fever few that we put in here. And these are our potato onions, which are starting to go to seed. As I've talked about before, uh, looking forward to increasing the genetic diversity with these by allowing them to go to seed, and then we'll separate them out and, and replant them. Um, some of the other things, characters we've got in here, we've got, this is oregano right there. So that's perennial. Uh, another blackberry right there. Another nitrogen fixing gumi over here. Uh, once this stuff gets filled in, in this, this is the big compost uh, that I built where it's, filled with layers of compost and wood chips and whatnot. I've planted in some winter squash in here. It should ramble all around this space. That'll be really wonderful and hopefully we get some storage squash from that. And then I'm also putting in, this is a hazelnut here, so that'll be part of our shrub layer. And we've also got here, this is, it's kind of beat up. I think slugs have been taking a liking to it, but this is rhubarb, it's fine. It's going to out out compete the slugs for sure, and of course, again, putting in water features, <clears throat> so it helps attract the birds. And what we're going to do is just have these rows filled with plants all up along these trees. It's going to get even more densely planted. I'm just at the beginning of this. We put all of this in last fall, so this is basically year one of what we're trying to do here. In a few years, 
as these trees mature and get larger, we're going to have a much more densely planted thing. And there'll be just little narrow walking trails and this will be mostly all plants. One of the plants that's kind of naturally here that I've been letting go, we've got some black locust. That's another nitrogen fixer. So I'll let that come up and then we'll coppice that. And I've been putting in some lovage here on the corners um, to go. It's going to grow up very tall, but it's a good celery substitute. If you've never tried lovage, it's more intense than celery, so you don't need as much, but great for flavoring soups and things like that. And then our other guild we've got, which this is kind of the unfinished space so far. This is going to get all wood chipped and cardboard laid down. But as right now, I just haven't gotten to it. Uh, these are our sea berries. So this is a female sea berry, some dock. Uh, we've got some Egyptian walking onion, some black eyed Susan right here. So I'm starting with these little like guild islands, I guess I'm calling them. And let those kind of work themselves out. And then as they get larger, we'll just keep expanding from them and then fill in this space. One of the big problems in this particular part of this orchard is under here is a massive amount of slate. It's about this far down. If you saw my other video where I was tapping it with the shovel, it's six inches under the ground. So we'll see how well these shrubs do. Here's our male sea berry. That's for the pollination to our female sea berry. Um, with this male, I can probably plant in a couple other female sea berries throughout the orchard. And that's where we're at here in the beginning of May. Hey, so this is our kind of, it was supposed to be our temporary area for growing plants, but I think it's going to be at least another season in this space. I'm still trying to build out infrastructure and beds and other places. But last season, I threw down some wood chips and stuff to help control the grass and whatnot around these soil bags. And I inoculated it here with, this is all wine caps coming up. This is the wine cap mushrooms, I'm breaking this all down into soil. They're pretty amazing um, <laughs> creatures. I mean, look at these things. They're all over the place. And these are all edible mushrooms. Of course, you want to cook them well. Um, yeah, just a bounty of them. Uh, I uh, will not need to ever buy wine cap spawn again because we will just keep taking these and spreading them out into other wood ch chipped areas. Look at this cluster here. That's pretty. And just erupting everywhere. Uh, we're going to get some rain tonight. We're going to have even more wine caps. And here is all the garlic beds. I thought these were going to be washed out because we kept getting so much rain. But now that the season's starting to dry out more, I think we're going to get a pretty decent uh, garlic harvest. We have a mixture of hard neck garlic and soft neck garlic in these beds. Um, we had grown potatoes in these beds the last uh, season. Kind of late potatoes. I think we didn't get them in until late July. And then uh, well, we still got a good harvest off them. They were little fingerling potatoes. Um, but yeah, uh, looking forward to when these garlics start getting their scapes on them. We'll be cutting those off and uh, sauteing those up. Maybe make some uh, garlic scape butter out of them. And it, obviously harvesting them and hanging them. And then I'm hoping to be able to reuse some of the cloves, create a new garlic patch this year. 